More Mississippians are starting to go back to work today under a new executive order. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. This even as state leaders are still evaluating the numbers, a persistent threat of COVID-19. Testing has been a critical factor as decisions were made on what to reopen. It's not the only factor, but it's important in the state's strategy of identifying and isolating cases. Courtney Ann Jackson has more. State leaders are standing by the idea that it's not wise to follow a model of everyone who wants a test gets a test, but they are loosening some restrictions. And fewer people who are having to come in with symptoms. We are going to lower the, the criteria for people to get tested through these criteria. So if you have any symptoms of COVID, don't have to have necessarily a documented fever. Or if you think you might have been exposed, please, re please register for the drive through clinics. Here's what they've discovered and say other states are noticing a similar scenario. One of the things that we are seeing now is that while supply of testing capability continues to increase, the demand for tests seems to be declining. Dr. Thomas Dobbs says it could be a sign of good news, but they don't want to be premature in those assumptions. As we have more capacity, we want to open it up a little bit. And, and look at targets, not just random targets, um, but high-profile high areas, areas where we have transmission, um, people who have symptoms, even if they're not severe, because we know it can be mild. But Dobbs notes the majority of the testing has been done in the private clinics, and they haven't had specific criteria to follow. Individual physicians and nurse practitioners can make their own decision, and so a lot of those have been done under this sort of, you know, broader sort of perspective. And the community health centers, too, which I think have done a fantastic job. The other change is the shift that comes along with the safer at home order. A movement is from government shelter in place, mandated for a few weeks, to individuals taking responsibility for themselves and their neighbors and making sure that you are doing the right things. The state health officer cautioning folks that they need to be wearing masks and not sending the whole family out for grocery runs. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. As a reminder, this current Safer at Home order will be in effect for two weeks. The governor's new order to, uh, does allow retail stores to reopen, but there are some restrictions. The Safer at Home order authorizes stores to allow only 50% capacity inside, and stores must have hand sanitizer and masks for all customers who come in. This procedure will protect customers and employees while in the store. Employees at local businesses say they are happy to be back at work. All my employees are wearing masks, and uh, all of them, we got to have sanitizer at the door when you come in. We ask them to use that. We, we want everybody to feel safe, and, you know, you're going to have a lot of people wanting to shop online with us right now, but they're going to start gradually coming in. It's been kind of rough because you can only do so much and so much at home, so we're just glad to be back, and we're just glad to help anybody any way we can. The Safer at Home order is in effect until May 11th. Not all businesses are cleared to open just yet. Among those still closed by the governor's order are gyms, but in Pontotoc, one did open despite the regulation. Our Allie Martin has more on the message the owners are hoping to send. Just hours after the governor's latest order, the owners of 300 Fitness in Pontotoc made a Facebook post promising the gym would be open Monday morning. On Monday morning, members showed up to work out and the authorities also paid a visit. Enough is enough. That's how Wesley Bray and his business partner Ryan Bramlett feel about the latest executive order that stated gyms still could not open. Bray and Bramlett knew they were defying the governor's order and they were not surprised when the police showed up and issued a citation. Local law enforcement, uh, you know, told us that they would be looking to come in and, you know, asking, you know, everybody to leave to clear the building. Um, you know, regardless, even if we're open or not. Um, so at this point, you know, it's just something we're trying to weigh. Even though we can open the doors and stay open, uh, you know, we can't keep local law enforcement out. And we can't keep them, you know, from basically asking, you know, members and uh, to leave. Pontotoc Police Chief Randy Tudor says he knows how local businesses have been impacted by the executive orders. However, he says it is his duty to enforce the law. I'm really concerned with the plight of our small businesses, but again, I can't pick and choose what laws that we enforce. And uh, so uh, when things change, you get back to normal, yeah. you know, we'll go from there. But right now I've got to go with the letter of the law. Both Bray and Bramlett say they understand the chief's position, but they also feel it's important to send a message. Stand up for your rights. You know, if uh, 
you're at home going broke, don't just sit there. Get out and, and, and do what you've got to do to provide for you and your family. The owners of 300 Fitness have generated a lot of response because of their stand. They're hoping other small business owners will take similar action. In the meantime, authorities say they will continue enforcing the laws. In Pontotoc, Allie Martin, WCBI News. The gym owners are charged with violating an executive order. The charge is a misdemeanor and will go through city court. Those living in Starkville will now have to wear face masks when out shopping. Alderman approved the resolution in a 5-2 to two vote today. Employees and shoppers at businesses open to the public will be required to also wear masks. Kids under the age of 6 will not be required to wear one. The new rule it starts tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning and will continue until May 11th. The board also voted to continue the city's curfew to stay in line with the governor's order, which is from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. except for essential travel. Four inmates inside the state's prison system have tested positive for the coronavirus. Two of those inmates were being housed at the Winston Choctaw County Regional Correctional Facility. The Mississippi Department of Corrections says the other inmates are at Parchman. There are some tests pending at other facilities. MDOC has provided masks to all inmates and correctional staff. Other measures to improve sanitary conditions have also been taken. Visitation remains suspended and employee screening continues. Starkville police arrest two men on charges, one of them even facing a kidnapping charge. 31-year-old Larry Simon of Jackson and 32-year-old Quincy Smedley of Laurel they were arrested Friday night. SPD had a checkpoint set up at Louisville Street and Industrial Road. Police say that the vehicle that Simon and Smedley were in nearly hit an officer and kept driving until running into more police at Emerson Schools. When the police got, or when the vehicle rather got stuck, police say the duo took off on foot. They were quickly captured. Simon faces a number of charges, including that kidnapping charge. That's where investigators say that a 16-year-old girl was also in their vehicle and taken against her parents' will. Smedley faces a simple assault on an officer charge and a shelter-in-place violation. We enjoy the great weekend and also a very nice Monday in Winston County. Look at all that blue sky we had earlier in downtown Louisville, Mississippi. Gorgeous blue sky. Now the clouds, as you can see right there, coming on in as we went into the uh, evening hours. And you can see we still have some clouds out there. No rain falling from those clouds at this time. We've got lows tonight down into the lower 50s, so pretty quiet overall. Not as cool as where we have been. Your planner in the Tupelo area tomorrow, 58 at 8 o'clock by midday, 74, upper 70s. Variably cloudy here on our Tuesday. Now, tomorrow night, really after midnight, we'll be watching out for some showers and storms that could be rumbling our way from the west. More on that in your full forecast in just a few minutes. Well, the energy was good this evening at Baptist Memorial Golden Triangle. A parade around the parking lot to thank our health care workers. It sure sparked a good kind of traffic back up here in the friendly city. Folks from around drove around the hospital with signs, cowbells, you name it. Even a few of the employees made it out to wave to those saying thank you. And that's my Facebook Live there if you hear that in the end. All right, well, your senior year in high school is filled with many milestones. Unfortunately for the class of 2020, their senior year was flipped upside down due to COVID-19. Now WCBI is recognizing every graduate for their hard work and our senior spotlight. Our Quentin Smith has the story. For the past few years, Joshua Aka has walked the halls here at Starkville High School, but the doors are now locked and the school is closed, bringing an abrupt end to an illustrious high school career. From making big time plays on the football field to being crowned homecoming king, Aka's senior year was definitely becoming one to remember. The memories that I created in this football season were something, some things that I never forget. Another highlight was the opportunities that I was presented in school. I was one of 15 students to be in the MSU Early Honors Shackles College, and that was an experience that made me a, a whole lot better as a student athlete. But COVID-19 has now taken away the last few weeks of high school Aka had with his friends senior prom and walking across the stage to receive his diploma. I was I was lost for words because you know it, it that's what you work towards it, especially at my age you you want you see past classes walk past walk on the stage and mm -hmm. you just 
you that's that's something that everybody looks forward to in their life. Aka recently signed a football scholarship with East Mississippi Community College and says he was looking forward to finishing the year being in the top 10% of his class and graduating with a 4.0. It's kind of bittersweet, but every memory that I created with my friends, my coaches, my teachers, it is it's something that I never forget. The reality of an uncompleted senior year is a disappointing feeling for Emma Kate Sparks, who attended Sotillo High School. I actually got selected to be on the Hall of Fame, so it was kind of sad and disappointing not to be able to go and spend the day taking pictures with all my friends for the yearbook. So that was kind of a bummer. Sparks was involved in several clubs at SHS and was on the dance team. But she had no idea that her last day at the high school would truly be her last day. I remember I called um, my mom and I was like, I really want to check out early if that would be okay. And she was like, no, you're going to stay the whole day. So I ended up staying the whole day and I, the whole time I was just counting down the minutes trying to get out of there. Sparks' high school plans to have a prom and a graduation for seniors at a later date. The soon-to-be graduate says she appreciates school leaders going the extra mile to make the senior class feel special. It definitely will be one to remember for sure. Probably not in the same typical ways that people normally remember their senior year, but it'll definitely be one that I tell my grandkids and all the future people. If you'd like to have someone you know featured in our senior spotlight, just click on the tab over on our website, wcbi.com. All right, we're going to send things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith, a pretty nice day out there today. It was pretty good. We do have a little bit of rain in the forecast here. We'll attack, uh, uh, let's just get right into our first alert forecast tonight. Whatever. I don't know what's going on. It's a Monday. Uh, my mind's still thinking about the weekend. Biscuit, loving the pill, loving the toy. Tomorrow, not bad, 79. We'll have a little bit of morning rain and storminess Wednesday. Picture perfect starting Thursday. Your full forecast is next. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Some of you may be working from home. If you, if you uh, stare out the window, that's what you want to do tomorrow. Stare out the window. Actually, just take that computer, just rip it off the desk and go outside and plug it in. Uh, it's going to be a pretty nice afternoon temperatures. <laughs> yeah, right? You know what? Actually, my dog, Aurora, she spilled Mountain Dew on my laptop a couple of weeks ago, so I can't even take my laptop outside. I don't even have a laptop anymore because she ruined it. But if you have one, take it outside. Enjoy the day. It will be a little bit cooler later this week, and then we're back to the 80s <laughs> as we get into the weekend. All right, let's talk about the weather for tomorrow night. I'm being real here. My dog ruined my laptop. I got to get a new one here, but tomorrow night we're looking at a chance for some gusty storms here, uh, maybe in the northwestern Mississippi, but it really looks like a, a better chance for these storms to grow upscale, intensify uh, tomorrow afternoon as they develop back into Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Uh, those will tend to go farther south. Notice the northern part of this line may actually weaken as it gets into a little bit more stable air here. This would be tomorrow after midnight, so we're watching out for it. We just have this level one risk for tomorrow night, and that's the lower end of the spectrum here. So right now we don't really expect a lot of craziness here, but things can change. This would be after midnight. Vanessa will have the very latest tomorrow morning, and of course I'll be in here uh, tomorrow afternoon as we get a little bit closer. Just have that WCBI News app. You may want to have that on your device, and it looks like wind and some downpours, the bigger threats tomorrow night if we do have some uh, gusty storms in the region here. But out ahead of it, 79 degrees, a mix of sun and clouds is looking pretty nice. No rain today. We don't want to see any more rain already the, in the top 10 for the wettest Aprils on record in Columbus, Tupelo, and Starkville. And as we get into May, we're actually going to start out on a dry note for early parts of May. This upcoming weekend looking great. Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon today. Tons of sunshine, blue sky across the board. Now, we do have some clouds out there now. And those clouds will be present in the morning. We start out in the 50s by midday into the afternoon. Mid to upper 70s here. Mix of sun and clouds. We don't really expect a lot of active weather or rain during the day. Midnight tomorrow night. Notice how we have some showers and storms back to the west here. Near the Mississippi River, those storms will cross the area and then weaken as we go throughout the wee hours of the night. So we do suspect a weakening trend here. But again, we'll just keep uh, watching this all come together. Let's check out your AccuWeather 70 forecast. 79 tomorrow, 74 on Wednesday. Those morning storms give way to some nicer weather behind it. Comfortable t Thursday, Friday, lows into the 40s there. Your weekend, summer-like, sunny, mid-80s.
All right, thanks, Keith. We'll talk to management about getting you a new laptop, maybe. <laughs> we take a closer look at some of the issues that face our older family members and our friends when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. As we age, we often find ourselves facing more frequent and more serious health issues. This week on Health Talk with Baptists, we will take a look at three of the most common conditions that affect older Americans. Hello, I'm Dr. Ashley Harris, geriatrician and chief medical officer at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. This week, we will be looking at conditions that affect the older population. Dementia is a condition where there is deterioration in memory, thinking, behavior, and the ability to perform everyday activities. Although dementia mainly affects older people, it is not considered a normal part of aging. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. The symptoms of dementia can be understood in three stages. The early stage is often overlooked because the onset is gradual. Common symptoms include forgetfulness, losing track of the time, becoming lost in familiar places. As dementia progresses to the middle stage, the signs and symptoms become more obvious and include becoming forgetful of recent events and names, difficulty with communication, experiencing behavioral changes including wandering and repeated questioning. The late stage of dementia results in continued decline in function and activity. Symptoms include becoming unaware of time and place, difficulty recognizing relatives and friends, difficulty walking, and behavior changes that may escalate and include aggression. There is no current cure for dementia, but interventions are available that can slow its progress. More importantly, much can be offered to improve the lives of people with dementia and their caregivers. The main goals for dementia care are early diagnosis to promote optimal management, improving physical activity, detecting and treating challenging behavioral symptoms, providing long-term support to families and caregivers. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptists, where we will discuss falls. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. A lot of familiar faces will be back on the softball diamond for Mississippi State next season. More on the seniors returning to Starkville next in sports. Swift Tom Ebel. Head coach Samantha Ricketts and Mississippi State softball taking full advantage of senior athletes gaining an extra year of eligibility due to their season being cut short. The Bulldogs will be returning 30% of its offense as well as a key piece to the pitching rotation. Seniors Fale Lua, Candace Dennis, Christian Quinn, and Alyssa Loza announcing on their social media accounts they'll be returning to Mississippi State. Senior second baseman Lindsey Williams is the only senior to choose not to return to Starkville for this upcoming year. Sticking with the softball diamond, former Morville Lady Trooper and ICC softball Summer Kreider will continue her career with Delta State. Before the coronavirus pandemic cut her season short, Kreider batted a blistering 429 with 10 RBIs and 12 base hits. Kreider led the Indians in home runs. As a freshman in 2019, Kreider will join teammate Hope Harbin at Delta State. ICC not done just yet, signing athletes to the next level. Women's basketball all-region guard Tabria Gandhi signing with Prairie View A&M to continue her hoops career. The Starkville native led the Lady Indians in scoring this past year with 11.7 per game and added four double-doubles. Along with her all-region selection, Gandhi was named to the MACJC All-North Division. ICC teammate Keely Wilson also signing with Alabama State as well. That's it for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Here's the state of affairs we're in right now. We just got out of a weekend. We are already looking forward to the upcoming weekend. Now, we do have a chance for some showers and storms Wednesday morning, really tomorrow night after midnight, and then we're home free, Scott, for the rest of the work week. Perfect. I already told my friends we're going to try to lay out my neighbor friends, not like a group of friends. Let me clarify. <laughs> yes, clarify that, please. Just one person. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.